Okay, now I'm gonna get ready to start painting this cylinder here. Uh, got it mashed off, so I won't get nothing inside of it. Get a rag down there. I probably have it setting like that. So I probably didn't have to do that, but I'll just be on the safe side here. And there's the cylinder after I got it painted. It's gonna look pretty good. It's a pretty bright red. It's kind of hard to tell now since that board's red, but uh, you'll see once I get it on the engine. And over here, I got the uh, painted the muffler red, the same color as the engine over there. And the expansion chamber flat black. Now I ignore the weld here. That was my very first weld I did about two years ago. And I welded that fitting on there. And uh, it's not the best weld, but it works. Okay, so here's some of the parts I got. Brand new clutch housing here. As you can see, there is uh, no play at all in this. And that's what a sprocket should look like. That turns really free, if you can tell. And a new clutch. This is the type for a keyway. Now my crankshaft on the my pocket bike don't have a keyway. It does for the flywheel side. You can see there, but it, it shouldn't matter much. If it does, we'll pick up another clutch for it. And I had to get some more bolts for it. The socket head metric bolts. And some flywheel keys. Like I told y'all not to lose your uh, flywheel key. What I do, I turn around and lose it myself. Now I picked up a gasket set for it and a copperhead gasket in case I tear it down again I don't have to keep buying new gaskets for the cylinder or the cylinder mounts on it. Now this is the original crank, or crankcase here. i am just uh, got it here. I put everything back together so I won't lose any of the bolts. Now I bought a new set of rings but I'm not going to be putting them in there because uh, these are still in pretty good shape. But I will show you how you you would re replace the rings though. Then I'm going to work on the foot pegs on this. I picked up a piece of uh, eighth inch steel, three quarter inch wide, three foot long. I'm going to make a frame that goes around here. And these will be my new foot pegs. These are four inch bolts, three eight, the three eighths thick. And these are three and a half inch ones, still three eighths. I bought two different sizes in case one of them's too long. Yeah, here's the cylinder after I got it painted. It looks pretty good. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do on this is get ready to put the engine back together. I'm going to put a little STP on the bearings here. That way they're not starting up dry when you first start the motor. You could use motor oil too on this. You don't want to put a whole lot because it'll get in with the fuel flowing through the crankcase and make the engine smoke at first for a while. And it probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of oil down here in the, uh, the connecting rod bearing here on the journal. And on the wrist pin here. Okay, like I said earlier, I'm not going to replace the rings. But I'm going to show you how you would do it. You just peel them off. Try not to break them if you want to save them. Just keep working with it until you can peel the ring off just like this. Also note how it's on here. See how it's got a slant in it? That goes into this bump right here to keep the ring from spinning so it won't get caught in the ports. Then when you get your new ring, you just peel it back on like I took it off. Just like that. And you do the same thing for the other ring. Take them both off and put, them, put the new ones on. Okay, now we're going to start putting it back together. Now on mine, it just has a keyway on one side, which is the flywheel side. This is the clutch side. This is the flywheel side. The piston and rod goes this way. Okay, now I'll put my gasket on this side here. The gasket only goes on one way. I'll be removing this part here and this part here. I just kept it on there to keep everything lined up easier. And we're going to drop it down over top of here. Just like that. Now I'm going to cut the excess part off there. Okay, now I'm going to put the reeds in. Get the gasket here. Now on mine, the screws go towards the top. That's how I remembered it. 
Okay, we got this plate here. I'm gonna get a gasket for it. Okay, the slant will go like this. And this plate here, it's going just like this. And you get your screws. It's kind of hard to do this here because everything goes together. Get one started and make sure everything lines up here. Get the other one started. There we go. Make sure your gaskets don't fold under or anything. And then get these tightened up here. Okay, now we're going to get ready to install the cylinder here in just a second. I want to talk about these uh, head gaskets here. Or cylinder gaskets that go on the bottom between here and the crankcase. This is your standard one. And this is a high performance copper head gasket. And both of them work the same. The only purpose of copper is so if you take your engine apart, you don't have to replace it usually. You can take an engine apart several times with one of these. That's why I got that. Okay, now when you get ready to compress the rings to put them in there, make sure they line up on that little bump. See the little bump right there in the middle? That keeps the rings from spinning around like this. And the same for the second one, it's around here. Now, I'm not going to record me trying to get this in here because it it's, uh, takes a little while to do it by yourself without a spring compressor. I don't have a spring compressor this small. But basically, you just compress the ring like this, put it in the cylinder, get them compressed enough, and be sure to put a STP or motor oil all over this and in the cylinder. This way, your motor is not starting up dry. And don't forget to put your head gasket on. Okay, I got the cylinder on here. Uh, you don't want to get you don't want to get these bolts too tight that you strip out the threads, but you want to get them in pretty tight. Got it on here. Now I'm gonna get ready to put the flywheel on. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready to put the flywheel back on. Now remember, if your flywheel is broken like this, be sure to replace it. I checked the price on there, and I'm gonna put it off getting it for a little while. If it causes a problem, I'll try to get it as soon as I can. But uh, for right now, it would be all right. Man, I need to get a flywheel key for here. And if you get the key in, the flywheel goes down here. Make sure it's spinning the crankshaft. And you get a bolt for it. Well, at this point, I ran into a problem here. And I think it's due to this copper head gasket. I think it's thinner. And so the cylinder's down. And the piston, listen, hear that sound? I think the piston is hitting the top of the head in here. They don't do it nowhere else except on top dead center. So I'm going to take this back apart and if it is, what's wrong with it, I'm going to put this other one on. Okay, I got the cylinder loose. When I press down, you can hear it. When I pull up on it, you can't hear it and it turns over real free. So that's what it's doing. The, copper head gasket is too thin for a stock engine that's for like a big bore kit or something I got back together put the other head gasket on there it's working fine now okay I got the coil mounted here you got your two bolts here and uh, what you usually do get about the thickness of a business car between the flywheel and the uh, metal on the coil that's about the right thickness I'm not sure what the actual spec is on this and your flywheel cover, bolts on with these three screws right here. Go down like that. And then make sure your starter's working. Then, while well, you got it here, we're going to check for fire. Just ground it out over here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got fire. Okay, this is the old clutch and this is the new clutch. You can see there's a quite a bit of difference in the thickness of the pads. This one hardly works at all. Now these have this one has bigger springs on there. And if the clutch engages at too high an RPM, I'll put these back on it. I like the way these worked. Okay, then your clutch goes on here just like this. Now if you notice this one has a keyway, 
I'm not using the keyway. My crankshaft don't have one, and I hope that don't present a problem, which I don't think it should. I'm not gonna have to get another washer. And you want to get this pretty tight. I like to wedge a screwdriver in here and tighten it up. It's kind of hard to do this without it mounted on the frame. Here's your all little size comparison. This is a piston out of 11 horse Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine. It's almost as big as the whole engine. This is the old housing. Look how much play is in that. You can see it wobble there. And this is the new one. It's real solid. Also, that's probably wore down quite a bit. The metal on this one looks thicker. And that's the old sprocket. And there's the new sprocket, what it's supposed to look like. And this just goes on here just like this. And you got four bolts that go in here. Just like this. Okay, I'm going to get ready to mount the carburetor here. Now, uh, I do have a new gasket for it here, but I'm not going to use it because the one that was already on here stayed on here. And it's still in good shape, so I'm just going to reuse it. You get two long screws that go through here. Go in here. Sorry if I'm blocking you. And you don't want to get these bolts too tight that you strip everything out, but you want to get them fairly tight. And also, this is how your choke mechanism works here. Okay, now I got the engine back on the frame here. I'm going to go ahead and put the. I'm going to start these bolts in the bottom. I'm not going to tighten them up yet. I got to get this bracket on the top here lined up. Well, I got the motor mounted here. I got the bolt in up here that supports the pull of the chain a lot on here. And you'll see what this is here after a while. Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the exhaust here. I got a bolt in here, not tight yet, so I can still move it. Here I get a gasket here, the two bolts go up through here. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready to mount the fuel tank. As you can see I got uh, all the exhaust done. Now I'm gonna see uh gotta figure out the best way to put the tank. And I'm gonna use these to tie it into place. I think it would be alright. It would be better the way I had it with the wire tied down before. I ain't going to put a fairing on it. I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. I might eventually get a fairing for it. Not for sure yet. Okay, there's a gas tank mounted. Hose runs down to a lawnmower gas filter. And it comes into the carburetor. I don't have any fuel clamps to put on here. The hose, fuel hose clamps. Be sure to put some on yours. That way their lines don't come loose or nothing. Okay, I just got my chain on here. I have a separate video on how to adjust the chain tension on one of these. So if you need to do that on yours, look it up. And that's my new foot pegs to replace the standard type of go on here. I left this like this so I can put the old style on if I want that. And if I need them to come out longer, I just put longer bolts in. Shorter or shorter bolts. And I put two on each side. If I don't like that, I'll just take take this one out and it'll be just like the regular peg on there. I just think it'd be a little easier to ride it. And I had to put a seat on it, that way you're not sitting on the muffler. Probably wouldn't be too good. And one more thing. How about that? I did forget to mention one thing. I gotta have a spark plug for it. And this is the type of spark plug I run. It's an E3 plug. It really does help to give you more power. And this is E312 for these pocket bikes. And if you're running the standard plug, Champion CJ8 for these. I just realized something else, guys. I can see how much gas I got in it now. <laughs> okay, let's get ready for the first start since I rebuilt it. No, not really rebuild it, but put it back together here. No gas leaks. And it sounds like it's coming alive. 